<laughs> Welcome back to another episode of these crazy fools that just talk about eating meat all the time and not much else. Today we're going back to basics again and we're talking about Carnivore 101. One, how do you get started and one, how do you feel and what to expect? What have we seen? What did we experience ourselves and what are the experiences that other people have shared with us? Today it's just me and Emily and Raymond, but that's all right because we really are the the pillars of the brain trust. Now. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> well, I don't know what we're going to do without uh, Joe and Justin and their inspirational speeches, but we'll, we'll manage somehow, right? Yeah, they don't talk often, but when they do, oh my gosh, it's like gold. They are kind of profound sometimes. They're very profound because it takes a while for us to shut up. Usually, at least once per video, they're they're profound. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Raimondo, what was the beginning like for you? So, uh, first of all, let's uh, talk the basic basic of carnivore. It is meat only. There's a word out there that says if it doesn't come from a mother, don't eat it. So, I think there's other terms, but I don't know it. Ever. Meat and fat. Meat and fat. Meat and fat, yeah. Meat and fat is good. Anything green, anything uh, you know, off colors is uh, not good. So it, it's got to be meat. Now that we went to that basis, uh, there are sticklers. So dairy is allowed if you don't have a problem with dairy. And typically, we say during your initiation stage, dairy is okay because uh, cheese and heavy cream is very handy for cutting cravings. Yes. It does have a little bit of sugar in it, but that's what actually helps cut the, well, the sugar and the fat. But anyways, that helps cut the cravings. So those are real handy for beginners. So let's talk about the, we are talking about specifically Carnivore 101, which covers a span of between six weeks and three months. Depends on how adaptable you are, what kind of diet you've been prior so let's say you were like a raw vegan and you went straight into carnivore. Well, more than likely, you're probably going to lean towards the three months. Uh, let's say you were keto for a couple of years. Well, obviously, it might take you six weeks to uh, transition. How do you know when you transition? The way to know how you transition, to me, in my opinion, and M, you might want to share it, Tom, to me, it's cravings. Your cravings should have died down significantly by whenever you transition. I'm not saying that you won't have these trigger cravings. Trigger cravings are like when you see something on TV, so see a billboard, those are trigger cravings. Or environmental cravings. Environmental cravings, meaning like you pass by a donut shop, you know, or stress cravings. You will still get any of those, but you won't get just sitting there doing your normal day-to-day, -day, unstressed on anything, it just won't come to your mind. Those then pervasive you, thoughts. That's right. That's right. And normally cravings are so bad at times that you just can't get it out of your mind. It just stays there, stays there, stays there. Then you know you've not transitioned. What do you think, Em? Yeah, absolutely. And i am found that everybody is different. You know, um, unfortunately, there's not like, uh, a cookie cutter, you know, plan that we can just say. Um, but that's why I think it's important to have the goal be compliance. Um, I think that whenever people, you know, trip out about like, oh, should I have dairy? Should I have cheese? Should I have eggs? Should I have? It's about compliance. It's about what you know yourself. You know what you are able and you're capable of following through on. So if you set this uh, experiment and you are going to fall flat on your face in a week, then that's not a good, that's not a good plan. Like set a plan that you can sign up for, that you can do. Um, and then adapt that, you know, then the, you'll, fr you'll finally learn through that process as soon as you the whole the whole point for me was just to remove the sugar and the carbs whatever you have to do to remove the sugar and the carbs then do that but um as far as whenever um starting out i believe that it is important to 
to keep those, the, to, it's almost like changing your cheats, like to have, you know, cr cream or cheese or whatever it is um, to be your go-to that whenever you realize that, oh my gosh, I, I want to like eat my hand right now. Um, you know, you, you can go to the cream or you can go to the, the eggs or the ch cheese or whatever it is. But um, eating your hand would technically would be, be carnivore. carnivore. <laughs> true, true, but not the goal, not the goal. Um, but I mean, that's, that's my take on it. How about you, I Tom? I, I want to, I want to back up on, on what the uh, M says. So, um, the, you do, you try it. So you're going to, the best way that I advise my clients is do it one week at a time. All you have to do is aim till the end of that week. And you're That's going good. to try 100% carnivore. Most don't do it, including me. Okay. When I first started, I didn't have enough willpower to hold out and I would have a cheat. Now, here's what's important, how you have your cheat. Do not say, oh, I'm going to have a cheat day. That's a no-no. There's no such thing as a cheat day. You may have a cheat, and I'm not even saying may. Okay, when you're deciding to cheat, first of all, you do it consciously because that way you're not going to be falling flat face on the cake. Yeah. So you could say, all right, I'm going to try this. I'm going to taste this. So maybe you could have a spoonful of rice, for example, and that would be your cheat. And then you go on from there or a whole sweet potato or a whole baked potato, but that's it. And you stop there and you restart again for another week and you try to make that streak as long as possible. The better you do it, the quicker your transition is. You want your transition to be quick. Why? Because it is up and down during your transition. Your energy level is gonna be up and down your, your uh, whatever problems that happen, whether it's diarrhea, rash, uh, uh, body aches, mind fog, all those are going to be up and down. When you transition, it's all leveled out. So that part is important. If you want it, yes, you can do it in a longer term or you can just get it over with and just be strict. I think my favorite part is whenever people say, um, like they're just going along, going along, and then they, they're like, this is amazing. I want to do this for the rest of my life. And I'm like, oh. and then they're there, like they're in that place, you know, they're in that place of what I experienced. And I know you guys experienced obviously, cause we're still eating this way after this long. Um, so you get to a point where it's not an effort it's where point. it's a, it's a choice and it's, it's the better choice. And it's the, the, the thing that you want to do. Um, and that's what I think is so magical about this way of eating is it's not like this endless struggle of, you know, I'm on a diet, I'm on a diet, I'm on a diet, I'm on a diet. Like it just becomes like, Ooh, this feels good. This feels better than I've ever felt, um, physically, emotionally. Um, and you start to see the changes in your body and you're like, okay, this, this is, I'm not going back. This is so, so fun. Totally agree. Um, I want to say too, you're not considered carnivore until after the transition stage. You're a baby carnivore after transition. That's the way I feel. I feel that you, because that's a new body, you literally come out a new person at that point. So the best way to describe that is being a baby and a baby carnivore. And what does babies have to do? They have to learn their environment. They have to learn how to walk. They have to learn how to grab things. They have to learn how to eat you know, do a lot of things. And that's what happens with a carnivore. What, my body changed so much. I had to relearn everything about it, including the, 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 the hunger signal. It was totally different. Everything of it was different. Absolutely. And, and I think also I get a little um, defensive of carnivore whenever people will try it for a week and then they will like binge eat over the weekend ice cream and yeah. everything. And then they'll try carnivore again for a week. And then they're like, it doesn't work. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, <laughs> like I'm not judging you for failing or for, for not, you know, doing that. But I'm saying like, don't say that carnivore doesn't work. 
if you were to actually eat animal meat and animal fat only, then it, it would work. Or at least six weeks to three months for at yes. least until you're down. Then you can have a true judgment. And we're talking about as 100% as you can go. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't necessarily disagree with you guys for, uh, uh, so much, but I take a slightly different approach. Uh, to me, in the beginning, you know, I think we all recognize that compliance is the most important thing. And I don't really, I don't really ever encourage people to cheat or plan on cheating. On the flip side of that is if people do fall off the wagon, I just consider it normal and getting back on the wagon is, is their thing. Um, and not, because you know how hard people can be on themselves when they fall off yeah. the wagon. Yeah. And the flip side of that is denial. Like you said, one day say, oh, it doesn't work. It's mm -hmm. because they fell off the wagon and then they ate a bunch of crap and they felt like hell and they go, oh, this doesn't work. And it's like, well, you fell off the wagon. That's not the same thing as it not working because it's very common for people to fall out of compliance in the beginning. But as we all experience and, and it, as we hear from other people, it does get easier, you know. So if you do fall off the wagon, um, you can get back on. And of course, I think I like to talk about the approach of beginning because there's kind of two ways to do it. There's people who just jump in head first and they just start eating meat and nothing else. And that works for some people. But you know how it is when you're coaching, you've got you to gotta meet people where they're at. I mean... I think the three of us, we didn't have any problem just going head first into it. And, and I myself never had any keto flu or carnivore flu or, or anything like that. I, I just felt better and better and better and it just worked for me. Um, so, uh, but some people do. And some people do have digestive issues. Some, some of us have already tried other diets. We already have that practice of being compliant. I mean, we, we've all met people that were vegan or plant-based and went carnivore. And a lot of times they're actually pretty good at it because they've already had the practice and discipline of being the vegan. The self-discipline. Or yeah. even keto. A lot of people who really were serious about keto don't have any problem of being serious about being a carnivore. But then there's a lot of people that do. So, um, you know, and some people, if they switch over to just meat, all of a sudden they're gonna have digestive issues. And that's overwhelming for some people if they get diarrhea or constipation or, or you know, nausea or something, for, which can happen when, anytime you drastically change your diet. So those people, I say, hey, that's all right. Just ease your way into it, you know, but you got to do it methodically and, and in a disciplined fashion. You know, start by just eating one meal a day. That's all meat, you know, and then you're and, and when it comes to taking things out, focus on the sugary, starchy stuff first, right? And then maybe take out your vegetables. And of course, you know, a lot of people are seasoned coffee drinkers like I was. And those are, those are usually one of the last things that people have to take out. You know, it's kind of like you set that as a long-term goal. It's like, yeah, I'm going to give up my tea or my coffee or, you know, my diet soda or whatever. Because the, the calories in those things typically don't interfere. But the, the other chemistry of them does, you know, they can block the absorption of minerals, those caffeine can, you know, be overstimulating, could be an appetite suppressant. And then of course, uh, you know, the sweetness of diet sodas can be a confounder for some people and stuff like that. But they aren't necessarily, uh, you don't necessarily have to give up everything all at one time. Some people do and they're very successful at it. But keeping, holding on to little things like that, I think uh, typically works better than, than letting people think about even cheating. So I, and, and then, and then we, we could split hairs over what cheating is because, you know, people argue like what types of cheese are acceptable. Is it slightly processed American cheese? Well, if it doesn't contain plant products, then it's probably not a problem, but any source of dairy could be potentially be a problem, right? So, right. you know, it could be a little cream in your coffee or it could be a little milk or whatever. You know, typically we, we encourage people to avoid milk because like, like Ray said, there's, there's sugar in milk and the less fat that's in it, typically the higher the concentration of, of, uh, of sugar. So, but that's um, for carnivore 102. 
That's the carnivore <laughs> one out too. That's the carnivore we'll put one. Put that on the back burner we'll for the next. Up. That's right. Well, the after. reason the reason I really wanted I wanted to us to talk about this is because I think sometimes people hear all of these amazing carnivore stories of transformations and they're just so focused on all of the positive aspects of um, what we have experienced and it's amazing but it's not the whole story um, there is nausea there is uh, times where you know, you, at the, for some people yeah 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 for some people there is itchiness there is uh, as yeah. as the um the toxins are, you know, leaving you. There is, um, the, you know, the thing with the poop. I mean, my poop didn't get regular for seven months. I mean, it was, sometimes it was really, really tar-like. And then sometimes it was really loose. Yeah. Um, and until I, I got to a place where um, my body, my bowels were healed and healing, um, you know, it took a while. And seven months, like that's a long time. You know, and so I think it's important that people don't just hear us saying carnivore is great, carnivore is great. It is, and it's the better choice for me. But there are things that come along with it at the beginning, as as your transition. Right, and yeah. uh, as as far I'd like, since we we talked a little bit about poop, I'd like to clarify. So constipation. So the first time I went on carnivore. And I used to go every day, three times a day on a carb diet. I can't imagine that. I know, it sucked. Uh, so all of a sudden, I'm going four days without. Not, not, no pain, nothing. Just don't want to. And I'm like, there is something wrong. So that automatically made me think that was constipating, constipation. That's not con constipation. If you feel uncomfortable and you, you, you feel pain, that's where constipation or you're trying to excel out and nothing produces then that's constipation now i know constipation because when i was going three times a day every time was an actual forced expel trying to expel it out don't get me wrong i got some big ones out but it took work so <laughs> yeah so there's a difference that was not constipation that's good. Yeah, yeah. That that might be uh something you can explore in one oh three. One oh three the the poop diaries. So. The poop diaries, one oh But I think that's so true, you know, because um I, and I didn't know that I had digestive problems because I thought that it was just normal to mm -hmm. be uncomfortable um until it resolved and I was like, Oh, I'm not I'm I, I'm not supposed to hurt. You know, I'm not supposed to, to have um, these pains. Right. Uh, I didn't know that. I would say the same thing about heartburn. Like, cause I would say, I'd complain about it and people are like, oh yeah, I get that too. You know, and you think it's normal for people or just some people, it's just how they are. They get heartburn or acid reflux all of the time or GERD or whatever. There's a whole bunch of different names for a slightly different condition that really is just you know, con stomach content contents coming back up, you know, and it's not normal. It's kind of the other end of the spectrum as it were from what you guys were talking about. Right. But that was my experience with it is like, yeah, everybody had some Tums laying around or some Rolades or, you know, some Alka-Seltzer or some Atlanta, some milk and magnesia, you know, there's just like a endless supply of, of digestive aids, you know, I mean, that's where soda pop came from. You know, all these, you know, like Dr. Pepper and Pepsi and all that. Pepsi was supposed to help resolve dyspepsia and Dr. Pepper was supposed to help be a digestive aid as well. You know, the, the mm -hmm. whole soda fountain thing was like, it was kind of like, oh yeah, get some fizzy water with some flavor in it to help your digestive issues, right? That's where it all came from. So, you now lo and behold, you could just eat meat and those problems just magically go away in years and years. Look back at years and years of suffering, right? Yeah. And it does. It really does go away. Now, let's be clear, though. On the initiation and adaptation phase, it's going to be up and down. There will yes. be some days that it will flare up and you're like, I was good. I was good for like this whole week. Why is this coming back? 
Yeah, because you're absolutely. healing. I think people's expectations should be that these things kind of taper off. Right. Uh, some some symptoms go away and never come back. Yeah, a lot of them taper like, off. Yeah. Yeah. So and some yeah. will surprise you, like you know, right in the middle, and you're like, well, "Why am I getting this? You know, why is this happening?" Yeah. The the only time I ever get heartburn now is like if I go out to eat and I eat something and it was clearly cooked in you know like vegetable oil you know they'll still throw a steak on the grill and vegetable oil or whatever or fish in particular you know it's and so that will give me a little bit of indigestion but like if i'm eating home cooked food um you know if i'm just eating meat i never get heartburn or certain spices depending on what uh, they cook it in i think well it could be vegetable oil too you might be more right than that, yeah. yeah you know I, I mentioned that you know my uh, my girlfriend she had cooked some steaks for us one night and she gave me a bite of hers and she had cooked it with mushrooms and garlic and onions and pepper and all that stuff and I took a bite of hers and I, and I immediately was like something's going on here you know and then I got that aftertaste and I'm like wow I used to enjoy this <laughs> you know, this is awful you know and I just been eating steak and even like i used to i mean i used to season my steaks like everybody else you know steak seasoning it's got garlic and onion and all that in it I used to you know used to like the road down leave it in the fridge for a day and then cook yeah. it and oh it was so good you know and uh and then when i started carnivore i was basically doing salt and pepper you know that was like my regular deal and then Eventually, like the pepper started tasting funny to me, <laughs> you know. And I think it changes our taste buds. Yes. And then sometimes I salt and sometimes I don't. Yeah. yeah. If, I, if you, I'm eating raw, I rarely salt. If I'm, I'm glad um, you, you brought the idea of spices. By the way, when you first start a, your adaptation phase, I usually tell my clients, go ahead, make it as long. Okay, when we talk about spices, Spices are allowed, but herbs are not. Herbs are not spices. Little chopped up onion, green onions and all are not spices. So mm -hmm. go ahead and spice it up with your paprika or garlic powder. Just don't go too crazy about it. That's all we say. So you make a distinction against fresh herbs? Is that what it is? Right. That's right. A distinction okay. between fresh herbs. I don't know if that matters, but, um, you know, I don't want them to get that yeah. It's, mm -hmm. So again, that's probably where Ray's style is a little different than mine. Cause I tell people, you know, if you're used to eating your steak with your seasoning, the way you do it, just do it that way. If you cook it, normally if you're used to cooking it in olive oil or soybean oil, try to try to go with butter or something instead, but anticipate that. getting away from that and don't anticipate it being a struggle. Just, just like, you know, some a month from now, try cooking your steak with just the natural fat from the meat, you know, and yeah. maybe cut out the steak seasoning and just try salt or salt and pepper and see how it goes. And it seems like it's just kind of a natural progression, just like we all started out eating, you know, what we're used to eat, uh, even cut wise. Like I used to eat sirloin, I started this eating sirloin and then I graduated to other cuts and then I used to grill everything outside. Now I cook everything in a cast iron pan. I used to put seasoning on now I just salt sometimes you know and it just for whatever reason we all gravitate in that direction I yeah. agree so that's why that's why initially you know I don't really worry about the adaptation phase as far as those spices because it will take care of itself afterwards and that you know after the adaptation phase is kind of like the tweak phase you start, you start trying to figure out whether you, you, you know, you've got problems with dairy. You start figuring out if you've got problems with uh, just, just any type of spices, any different spices, and then you start taking out the adding in and seeing if you have a reaction. But adaptation phase, it's important to keep variety because you're so used to variety. You want to enjoy or attempt to enjoy carnivory. So by giving yeah. yourself variety, you don't feel like you're limiting yourself. And again, that's, you know, where, you know, raise, raise my style might vary a little bit because I, I try and think of it as meeting the person where they're at. And like I said, some people are just jumping head first people and they're like, I'm cutting out dairy. I'm not going to have any cheese. I'm not going to have, you know, this, that I want to, I want to be stoic about it. And that's just how some people are, you know, it's like, 
listening to David Goggins talk about running a marathon versus uh, Zach Bitter. Zach Bitter is logical and methodical and very sort of sublime about everything. And David Goggins is just an animal about everything. Ah. So, <laughs> so yeah, so I kind of I kind of take it on a case by case basis. It, unless people have no idea how how they prefer to do this, like if they're a blank slate, then I probably would take Ray's approach. Yeah, and I, I think also um, it's hard for me to uh, relate, I guess, to people who aren't sick. Um, because if they aren't sick, then they can eat a bowl of ice cream or a pizza and it not affect them in pain. Like it doesn't, it doesn't bother them. Me, it was super easy for me. It, I was like on those little kitty bowling lanes. Like I had the bumper, you know, things because it, like it's the second that I would go over, I would, I would feel it whenever I would eat, you know, something off plan, it would just be like, oh my gosh, like I, I can't do this. Yeah, um, I, I think you gotta take that approach to the whole thing, the whole the whole scenario, because some people may come into this thinking, oh, I've got to eat grass finished regenerative beef, right. you know, from the get go. And for most people, they don't have to. Only no. like some people like, like Emily, she seems to be very sensitive. She She's uh, very disciplined at where she purchases her, her meat from a farmer. She gets grass finished beef. She eats, you know. But I didn't raw. start that way. Didn't for the, start that way. For the whole first year, I just ate from the grocery store. Initiation stage is different, you yeah. know. And it seems to become much more important for her to do that. But uh, like me and Ray, we mostly eat from the, from the supermarket type or Costco or, you know, Sam's Club or whatever most of the time. And, we don't seem to have any issue with that. In fact, right now the price of beef is basically doubled and I'm shopping the sales. You know, the last two days I've been eating uh, tri-tip, which is really common in California, but I guess not as common in a lot of other states. And uh, I grew up roasting a whole uh, tri-tip on the grill. A lot of people didn't have it, but I've actually been slicing it into small steaks and cooking it in a pan. and it's been really good but that's quite a departure from you know ribeyes and in new york strips which i i tend to prefer but they're so pricey and, and, and downright scarce sometimes right now that i'm just eating i'm eating whatever pops up on sale right now and it's going great okay so uh i actually did try to start at regenerative meats and i'll i want to give you guys an idea of why i stopped First of all, my farmer could not get me the ribeyes I wanted because, you know, I wanted everything right. Ribeyes, regenerative meats, you know, maybe some ground beef from them. Uh, not much. I even had the liver and stuff like that. But he couldn't provide enough. You know, there's not that much ribeye in the cow. So um, second of all, extremely priced when you go uh, regenerative. So I did that for about a couple months, started stressing myself out, stressing my wallet, et cetera. And I started to think to myself at that point, you know, I'm not, I'm not doing this for any reason except for my health. So, and I see all the success stories like, uh, you know, the Anderson family, they eat at Costco. So I got myself Costco membership, tried my first ribeye roast, and I was like, wow, that is the way I'm going. It, it was instant. I mean, I fell in love with it instantly. And it was so easy. I go in there 15 minutes, grab it. Uh, with the farm, I actually had to drive uh, an hour away, get my stuff, come back. So it, it was a lot of work. So. Yeah, I think we'd all like to think that eventually we'll be eating regenerative meat from a local farmer, you know, <laughs> at, a, at an affordable price. We're just not there yet. You know, that's just, that's our long-term goal, right? I mean, right. I think we all feel that way. And I still want to go that way. I do. Yeah. Uh, yeah, right now. Right now, please, Carnivore 101, do not copy. Yes. The yes. idea Simple. is is keep it as simple as possible and as easy as possible. If you don't, you're not going to be likely to keep this up. So when I say easy, get yourself an air fryer. 
because air fryer cooks quick. Both yep. sides. Other thing you can do, um, I don't know how you guys feel like about this, but uh, I always hear McDonald's. Burger yes. Fries. Yes. It's a dollar fifty at the store. Go in there, get just the patty only. Get whatever amount you think you need to eat. Uh, I'm even okay with you adding a cheese. So mm -hmm. if you're poor, I mean, you can get what? I think uh, a buck fifty a piece for a quarter pound. So that's what, uh, like four bucks. You know, I mean, that's yeah. pretty put on cheap. And know? and eat as many as you want. Exactly. You know, eat as much as eat as much bacon as you want. That's right. Like I, I think it's so important whenever people first start this, is they yeah. they try and go they try and like be restrictive amount wise and i'm like no 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 no. you're being restrictive already in choosing to just eat meat yeah, don't eat, be restrictive with eating, amount eating carnivore for most people doesn't require them to restrict calories no some people do overeat on it but that's that's not not typical we're not it's worried about very that. difficult yeah, we're not worried about that on the initiation stage anyways because it's all about cravings. You don't eat enough, guess what's going to happen? Cravings You're going to be have cravings. Grab you yeah. and they're going to take you over. Yeah. You're are... going fast too much, that's what's going to happen. I'm sure you guys have mentioned, had people mention the sugar and bacon, but most bacon, the actual meat you're eating has very, very little sugar in it. So yeah. it tends, Less than tends... one gram of sugar is what I look for. Yeah, so... The, the only uh, thing I'm concerned about on anything processed, though, is MSG. Yes. MSG, because that triggers cravings. Yes. Avoid MSG. But otherwise than that, get your jerkies with the, even a little bit of sugar or bacon or whatever. It's better than, I mean, if you can do without, that's fine, but you're going to need snacks. So definitely get those as snacks. Yep. Agreed. And, uh, you know, like for us on the West Coast, a lot of seed in and out and uh so like you can get it i think patties there are typically about a buck 29 something like that and you can get the flying dutchman which is two pieces of meat with a piece of cheese in the middle you know if that's your thing uh and they're i think they're like 250 or something for for that so you know you can go i know wendy's is i haven't tried eating carnivore at wendy's but i know a lot of people do that's a a nationwide chain so a lot of people have success there and you know like ray said uh get an air fryer i'm probably the only person i know who didn't buy an air fryer yet uh i used to do a lot of cooking uh a lot of grilling and i've actually come down to just using cast iron pans i have a 10 inch and a 12 inch and uh i do 95 percent of my cooking in there occasionally i, I started smoking meat i'll smoke meat uh, I tend to just use a cast iron pan though, because I'm really the only one in, in my household that eats carnivore. So if I smoke a pork butt, guess what? It takes me at least a week to eat the whole damn thing. You know, <laughs> there's no point in firing up a big grill because I'm typically, you know, cooking once or twice a day, a steak or something. And then of course, like these other crazy people, I had the other half the time, I'm just eating raw meat. So, uh, <laughs> I don't I don't get into the fancy cooking like I used to and just having a pan there that I turn on and cook in it's it's maybe not quite as convenient as an air fryer because an air fryer you could set the timer and walk away and just come back and it does it's not going to overcook but I get the the beauty of that but then there's a lot of people out there who are kind of trying to be minimalist too and uh, if you've got one cast iron pan in the family, it will last for generations and generations and generations. In fact, some of the ones I have, I have no idea how old they are. They've been handed down and handed down and probably came across the prairies in, a, in one of those wooden schooners or something. <laughs> a Condoruga or something, I don't know. But, uh, so yeah, so you don't have to buy an air fryer, but I see the, I see the beauty of it for sure. The, the other reason is uh, when you start cooking on a cast iron pan, especially if you don't really know what you're doing, you can smoke up the house very quickly. Yeah. I've yeah. done that a few times. I, I, I would say that one of the problems people have is they cook at too high a temperature. Right. So I, you know, I was, I was teaching somebody in the house to, to cook and they burn that my pan like three times in a week. 
I kept saying, man, just put it on the lowest setting because it happens to be a very hot stove to begin with. It's a gas stove. And uh, the two front burners, man, you, you better just put it on the lowest setting and keep an eye on it. So uh, that's true. And uh, I, I, can't, I can't disagree that an air fryer is way more convenient and way safer <laughs> than, than, than any pan because it, it certainly seems to be. So. No. Yeah. So anything else that you guys can think of that you would tell somebody for 101? Yeah, one more for 101. So there will be a point that, and I've seen it in enough clients to uh, know this is a thing. It's what we call meter version. So there will be a point like right about a month or a month and a half in, you'll like not want any meat. You would rather starve. You want something else other than meat. I've heard that mentioned. I yeah. never experienced it. I actually did experience it. Or you'll want to start thinking about adding in, saying, oh, I can't do this for the rest of my life. I want to start adding in certain veggies. Maybe this veggie would be good. You know, it's, it's okay for me to have it once, you know, every meal or whatever. So when you start fantasizing this, this is the part of the meter version. First of all, that's a good sign. Why is it a good sign? That means you're looking at the finish line. You're right there. All you gotta yeah. do is truck through that willpower. It usually lasts one to two weeks. You truck through, you hit your adaptation. So you, you know that this is a good sign. Uh, the other, the, the reason being, and I'm going to get uh, on a bro science, I'm going to bastardize it, hopefully Tom doesn't mind. But what it is, is your gut microbiome is, uh, is uh, changing drastically. So now yes. the carbs and sugar part is starting to die off. Your gut actually has a very strong connection to your brain and it tells the brain that, hey, I'm dying. I need to have this. So it's going to try to trick your brain any way it can so you can keep that in, so you can keep it alive. Go ahead and kill it off. That's how I see it. Go through your adaptation. And then from there on, all you're going to want is meat. Tom? Absolutely. Yeah, well, you know, I, I, uh, I, I would say, yeah, you're that you're spot on. I just like to say that you know, not everybody has the same experience. So obviously, yeah, not everybody's going to have flu symptoms. Not everybody's going to have a meat aversion. Yeah, yeah. of course. But the, but you are going through changes, and you know, uh, I I think also too, we 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 should just kind of say that like adaptation isn't necessarily going to be the same for everybody. It's kind of that initial just shift away from carbs and into just uh, protein and fat. Uh, that if once people get over that hump, they become very comfortable. They become much calmer. Cravings start to taper off, and so on and so forth. But but we are all still adapting. You know, probably years into this, our bodies are still going through changes. There's a lot of levels. And, oh yeah. You yeah. know bad things are tapering off and good things are, are, are increasing is, is what That's we right. experience. So. Absolutely. And, um, I, one of the things that I always talk about is, uh, mental health. And, um, I think that, uh, it's been many times with clients that they they want the results like within the first week. They want to feel better and happier and to have the depression to go away like within the first week. And uh, number one, it, it doesn't happen like that. You know, you're still going through it, it. Sometimes you even feel worse. You feel just like uh, drained and emotionally, uh, anxiety. mentally, mm -hmm. anxiety. Yeah. Um, but they, and then they say, well, I had this uh, one, you know, good morning. Right. But then for uh, three days, I didn't. And it's not a light switch. Uh, I think Brett Lloyd, Lloyd talks about it being a light switch for him. I think he's the only person I've heard. Um, but have, most, yeah. most people, it's, it, it is a progression. And it's, it's an up and down, but it's a progressive up and down. Progressive that you, you progressively you know, feel better. But you still have the highs and the lows. You kind of and push I still, your way up the hill. Yeah. yeah. That's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> and I still, I still have bad days. I'm still, you know, very bipolar, but it's managed bipolar. And that's the big, big difference is right. that I'm not, 
I don't have to succumb to my mental illness. I'm able to um, stay out ahead of it. And um, it's, it's, it's something that you have to relearn, you know, to really have those coping skills. Um, and it's, it was good. It's good for me to be able to talk to clients or talk to people and just say, you know, it's not that this isn't working. It's just that it's, it was, it takes a while for you to adapt to it. So, so would, you, would you say that you're just not as debilitated by the bipolar illness? And would you also say that it cycles slower? Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely cycles slower. Um, it's rare for me to have a bad day. Um, and I wouldn't even say it's a bad day. I have bad moments. Um, I have, um, you know, life circumstances that come up and they, um, you know, throw a wrench into things, but, um, it's like, I'm still able to see the light. I'm still able to have hope. And when I was sick, 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 there was no light. There was no hope. There was no nothing. It was complete darkness and depression and hopelessness and uh, there was nothing. And so now I, I feel that even whenever something comes up, like a, it's like a bump in the road, like, Ooh, okay. That was rough. You know, it's not something that wrecks me. Right. Yeah. I don't know. As a, as a person who long suffered from anxiety and didn't even know what it was really, you, you realize like, all your decisions are heavily influenced by, by it. And, and it could be triggered by an event or it could just come out of nowhere. You have no idea why you just wake up with it. You're like, what the hell's going on? You know, and you don't know. And you think everybody experiences, you know, is, is it's normal, right? You think it's, it's been normalized in your own mind and in a lot of other people's minds, just like heartburn and constipation yeah. <laughs> normalized, you know, part of getting old. Yeah, it's part yes. of getting old. Yeah, how many times we're like, well, you're getting older now. <laughs> Inks pay you. Getting old isn't for wimps, you know. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, then then you start realizing, holy cow, I'm, I'm a new person. It's not that the anxiety is completely gone or is never triggered by something or That's doesn't right. creep in un unexpectedly without some sort of trigger. It does, but it's certainly like, you know, like Emily said, it's much more manageable and it's, it's, a, it's, you know, I, I don't know exactly, like you talk about darkness, like, like it's in your mind, your mind is, is in the dark. And for me, the anxiety, I had physical symptoms, you know, uh, it was hard to, to breathe regular as constantly you felt, you know, the, the tension and sort of the knot in the stomach, you know, it's like, why do I have a knot in my stomach? You know, where did that come from? You know, and it's like, it's not like it just goes away or you can just wish it away or you could just sit quietly and, and meditate it away because <laughs> it just doesn't work you know I mean you you could manage it to a small degree that way but then you're like wow that hardly ever happens anymore you know what's going on here you know why am I being so social you know why am I why am I not uh, you know anxious and, and why am I you know getting so much done in the day why is my mind so much clearer you know, why am I so much happier? You know, it's kind of like, I almost think a lot of it is just, you're allowed to enjoy things more to a greater degree. You know, even the little things bring are more jo joyful than they could have been before. It's like, you just couldn't, couldn't feel that level of well, just enjoyment. Because you were so distracted by everything that was so horrible, you know? Right. I mean, like, okay, for instance, um, I found that I am much more capable of meditating now because I can sit there for longer without my back hurting and my hips hurting and my knees hurting and my stomach hurting and my head hurting and me being tired. And, you know, I'm able to really sit there in the moment because I'm not distracted by all of these horrible, you know, things. And I, 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 I had no idea that, um, the power of, being able to just have everything quiet for a minute and it is it is so powerful and and i i think that that's not necessarily a component of carnivore but carnivore allows me to get to that place of of meditation 
Who knew a steak would make you tranquilly? Carnivore Zen. That's right. What were we calling it? Meat based mellow. Meat based mellow. I like that. Yeah. My medicine comes in a tray with plastic over it. <laughs> Goes into a pan, and then I eat it. <laughs> Speaking of uh, medicine, real quick for the Carnivore 101, what's your guys' take on taking any supplementations? Hmm. I my I, I know that I might be uh I don't know. I don't I, I'm just gonna tell you what, what my gut is. And my gut is to keep everything that you're doing, especially any kind of psychotropic meds, um, anything that you're already on to keep it at the beginning. You're not trying to, you know, recreate life at the beginning. You're trying to adapt. And I think it's important to keep the medicines that you're on. Um, and even caffeine. I, I think it's important to keep, if you're already addicted to caffeine, you need to keep that coffee. Do black coffee. If, yeah. But if you're addicted to caffeine, I would, I would, I would keep caffeine. Um, what what's smoking? your take? What would you say about that? And I think smoking is the same case for anyone. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You're already doing something huge for you to take out smoking at the same time. That's ridiculous. I You're agree. just asking for failure. But you know what Frank Zappa said, tobacco is another vegetable. <laughs> there you go. Sure. Not very carnivore of you. <laughs> That's uh, I, I say you gotta, you don't want to do too many things at one time. Right. That's so awesome. just like we, we do, I, I'm sure most of would tell somebody who's getting started, you know, don't get into fasting and, and, no. uh, you know, don't mess with, you know, like, you know, we, we've all seen that, like people are like, Oh, salt's good. Salt's bad. So, you know, it's like, okay, if you're used to eating some salt, you should probably keep it up. Cause if you take it out of your diet right away, your, your electrolytes are going to crash to the floor. Oh, yeah. You know, yes, so, that was horrible. Uh, you know, don't so keep it simple. So don't make too many changes. Don't decide that you're going to work out two hours a day, yes. seven days a week. All of a sudden, when you haven't been doing out. it in the past, this is what I tell people. Yeah. Think about it the, at the beginning, like you have the flu, because you really do. You really have been sick. If you've been on the standard American diet, you have you are just chock full of junk. And so you need to take this time. If you had the flu, if you really had the flu, would you be mad that there were dirty dishes in the sink? No. You'd be like, dude, I have the flu. Leave me alone. Would you be mad that you didn't go get up at five o'clock and go to the gym? No, I have the flu. Leave me alone. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, so honestly, I really say give yourself a break. Just totally like yeah. act it's like you're – it's more important to comply with the diet, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And and yeah. I don't I, I don't recommend my clients to work out until they feel like working out. Yeah. And I, I would say I think we've all been suckered into trying all kinds of supplements in the past, and most of them are a waste of time and money, and we don't need them. But if you know you need something, or if you're on a prescription, you know you need to manage that with one. your doctor. You know. That's right. So, I mean, if you go, if you've been eating a regular uh, diet full of carbohydrates you, you're, and you're on blood sugar lowering medications, you know, metformin, you're taking insulin and stuff like that, then you seriously need to monitor that and keep in yes. touch with the doctor because you're probably going to need to taper off on that. Yes. You know, if you're on high blood pressure medication, there's a good chance your blood pressure is going to normalize on its own. So you need to keep in touch with your doctor on stuff like that. But I think most supplements uh, are are probably not doing anybody any good anyways. Unless you know you're deficient in something, don't, don't supplement. That's, That's my right. opinion. Save the money. You yeah. know? And if you've got an autoimmune disease like I do, a lot of those supplements, just the capsules alone are bad for you. You know, yeah. they, those alone could be uh, activating your immune system. You could be generating extra antibodies and stuff like that. So if it, unless there's some reason to be on them, don't be on them. I agree. And if it's and I, prescription, talk, talk to your doctor about it. Tell them you're making changes. I want to say in my experience, uh, my chiropractor talked me into getting some calcium uh, uh, pills. And I did. And instantly I felt this depression. But I couldn't put my finger on it. I kept up with the calcium every day. And that was the only thing I added. 
And I did that for a month. And I had a lot wow. of depression. And then I gave it up. All of a sudden, all cleared up. And I was like, wow. No yeah, no, it, it may not have actually been the calcium, but it was probably something else right. in there with the yeah. calcium. Or whatever. I, yeah. You know, that either way, that's how sensitive I yeah. am. So realize that supplements could do that to you after adaptation more than likely. But, you know, some people say, well, I have all of this stuff. You know, what am I going to do with it? Finish it up. Just don't buy it anymore. And then add it one at a time later on or something. Yeah, and if, you, if it's something that you really feel is affecting you, maybe you just want to taper off of it, right? Right. So not not quit cold turkey, but right, yeah. most of that is 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 unnecessary. But you want to you want this to be as simple as possible, and you want to be as compliant as possible. You don't want to just start exercising really hard and blow out a knee or something, you know, because that's a major setback. So if you're going to exercise, ease into that too. But it, it's more important to avoid things that are going to be uh, that are going to create problems with being compliant with the diet or just sticking with carnivore that's that's the thing get through that and then you know most of us after we've been eating better for a while and just eating meat we feel like doing stuff and then we start you know what start by walking the dog or just start by walking 10 minutes after each meal and uh, don't don't go decide you're going to be a crossfit champion you know overnight don't don't challenge uh, charmaine to an arm wrestling match or anything <laughs> crazy like that you know that's great. So anything else, guys? Or did you guys want to wrap it up now? I think we I got think it covered. I got 101? 101 yeah. covered? Mm -hmm. Well, I thank you both for being here. I think it was a great video. And I think we'll help a lot of people out there. For those of you who want to find Emily, she, uh, she has a group on Facebook called Center of Brilliance. I'm sure there'll be a link in the notes. And Raymond is a coach over at Meet RX. And uh, you could probably find, track him down on uh, Facebook too and Instagram. You guys are both on Instagram and Emily at Center of Brilliance. And Ray, what are you on uh, Instagram? Um, uh, R Nazon, Instagram. R Nazon. So Raymond Nazon, R Nazon at, on Instagram. And uh, uh, his, his info will be in the show notes as well. So I'd like to thank everybody for watching. I'd like to encourage everybody to subscribe if they would. Uh, YouTube's been going through some turmoil. A lot of people are getting unsubscribed from channels. So make sure you're still subscribed to your favorite channels and uh, leave us some, uh, some, uh, some uh, feedback in the comment section under the video. We'd like to answer questions. Uh, we'd like ideas for future videos. Would like to visit us uh, at in Facebook. I have a group called Autistic Carnivores, and also the Ketogenic Fasting Project and the Meat Cult. So, if you guys are Facebookers, I'm also on uh, on Minds, Thomas Allen Clark on Minds. So, anyways, hopefully uh, everybody out there is going to eat some meat, and uh, hopefully everybody feels better. And in the meantime, don't fall, don't down. fall down the carpool. <laughs>